Uh, the environment we're in right now, public or private, is interesting. I'd say transparency on executive pay and governance is at an all-time high. Shareholder engagement on executive pay is at an all-time high. The influence and impact of proxy advisory firms is at an all-time high. Many private companies, either intending to become public, are, are, are getting much more close to these rules uh, sooner than they used to. And for the companies that are maintaining their private status, are looking at some of this and separating out some of what's noise for them and, and pulling from that the true uh, governance and compensatory practices that can really help make a business better. It's offering employees the ability to make a different election on how they're going to receive that year's deferral and when they're going to receive it each year, keeping them separately tracked, separately accrued, in separate buckets so that as things change for an employee, they can change their elections to accommodate for that. Uh, and also taking advantage of the provision that allows you to extend your deferral for more than, if you do it for at least five more years, without it being deemed to be an impermissible change. Those are things that you can build into your deferred compensation plan to allow for more flexibility. We're never going to get back to where we were, but a properly designed plan with a good administrator can really offer a lot of flexibility. There is a disclosure requirement that kicks in in 2013 for the first time. Uh, annual meetings that occur after 1-1-2013, uh, there has to be a disclosure about whether or not in your proxy, whether or not you retained a compensation consultant uh, and, and a conflict arose, and if so, you have to describe what you did about that conflict. Uh, there have been more and more required disclosures about compensation consultants and proxies for the last few years. This is a new level of disclosure specific to is there a conflict uh, with your compensation consultant. The board must consider whether that director receives any kind of compensation other than director fees from the company. So if there's any kind of consulting relationship, any kind of advisory relationship, that has to be considered in determining whether or not they're independent. They also must determine whether or not there's any other kind of affiliation between the director and the company when determining if that director is independent and can sit on the compensation committee and be independent from management and make independent judgments on executive compensation.